Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. In the first of tonight's nightcaps, I do a little bit more work for myself. I do a repair job on my marine steam engine. Um, I'm getting it ready for a steam rally coming up next weekend, which is Chester Lee Street Rally. It's going to be a massive, massive do. There's over 40 full-size steam engines there. So if you're local, why not call in, have a look, um, come and meet me, shape your hand and say hello, because I really do in bait. In part two, I do a, another repair job. Uh, it's, a, it's a valve off a Fowler traction engine. Uh, I do a repair job on that. I've been doing quite a lot of work in my other workshop uh, where I do the welding and where the plasma table lives. My um, plasma table has had its control box in its computer away, yet reprogrammed by my friend Rob at Extreme Plasma. This is the latest software. It looks much easier to use. Um, so really it should make a fantastic product, even better again. I'm looking forward to getting it up and running. Uh, there'll probably be some video of the new program next weekend. On the last video with this little marine engine, I decided I was going to put that drip oiler into there. That's here's BSP, and unfortunately that's quarter BSP, but I think there's enough material on there to be able to turn that down and put an eighth BSP tape or thread onto it. I'm going to take it apart and see what can go about mounting it in the lathe, machine that down and put some threads on, because I think that's going to be just right proportion to go in there, and it's certainly a lot better than the, the cheap and cherry Chinese one. That's just plated, gold or brass plated. That's a real one, that's actually solid brass. I got a pair given to me of a viewer and I'm going to work out ideal for this particular engine. Right, we'll go about taking it apart. The first thing to call is a needle. That's the part that controls the oil, the spring loaded needle. There's a little check nut. Simply screws off. Looks like a nice Looks like hard leather, actually gasket in there. That's the side glass, the gasket in the bottom. A piece of gauze or something, a big bit of shade going through there. I'm not quite sure what happens here. I've tried to get these apart before. That's meant to screw off there. I don't think it wants to. I think what I might do is just hold that in the chuck, put a centre in, and just carefully machine it away. I'll have to be careful because that is actually wasted there. Well, it's not wasted, it's got a drain through it. To let the oil go through. So like if we're carefully mounted in the chuck, put a centre in, machine that down to the right size and then start a die and I can use that to drive the, the thing through the die and that should sort the threads out. I actually cleaned the lathe down last night and it never fails that every time I, I clean the lathe I end up with a brass job to the machine. And it will put a centre in there first. So I'll have to be very careful, I don't want to take big cuts, just a nice fine cut just to take the threads off and then take it down to size. This right hand knife tool should do the job perfectly for us. We want this down to 9.7, so I have to be very careful, really light cuts. Not running dead through, you can see the centre's moving, but it's going to be alright for what it's got to do. I've measured an eighth BSP tap. If I just clear that, there would be a direct comparison what I need off there. I measure this, and we need off there. This is about the size actually, we need 0.2 of a mil off there. So I'll please I'll stop when I did.
Okay, so dead on size. Right, that's an 8th BSP die. We'll bring that drill chuck in just to hold it nice and square against the jaw. Obviously I'm doing this by hand and I can feel how much load's on there and it's not too much, that's going to be alright. I don't want to damage the... that's starting to slip in the truck chuck now so we'll take it out of here, put it in the vise and finish the thread off. In fact, we'll just do it like this. Piss off. Right, so now we can assemble it. That's going to screw in there splendidly. I blew it through the airline, it's nice and clear, there's no bits of shite left in it. A little bit of pipe tape. Right, that simply screws into there like that. I've got a brass elbow somewhere, I need to find it. And the bronze one looks better than the, the cast one or the malleable iron one. Right, so that's in there quite nicely assemble it now first thing is one of the joints or one of the gaskets and there was a little bit of gauze you see the hole there that you all go through that just stops any big bits of shade going through then there's a lens a perspex or plastic lens I'll give it a little clean before I put it on Right, so that simply drops on there like that. And we'll put another another joint, I think cardboard or leather joint goes on there. That screws on. As we're speaking about lubrication, I got this oil can a while ago. It works intermittently. Uh, it's a really old one. It's worth cleaning up and keeping to work this engine with. It's nice, it's not plastic, it's a real the real job. So I'm gonna clean it up. We'll take it a bit and see why it's not working. I think I could probably tell a few stories that. Whenever I go to a car boot sale and I see something like this, I've just got to have it. I've got to buy them, I've got loads of them. I just want to collect oil cans. Right, you can see inside it's all brass, no plastic. A little bit of something nasty there. And if you look in here, the seal on the top is badly which all come to bits. Chances are it's a little bit of that trapped in the one rear valve in there. That should screw off what it does. There's a little bit there, a little bit of that black shite. Piston in there. So when the piston comes down it pushes the oil down and up through that spout. And that's a little one way about, and there's little bits of muck and black crap in there. So I think possibly a good clean up, a good wash out, and there's nothing to go wrong with it. Reassemble it, and then hopefully we'll have a nice functioning oil can that certainly looks the part. See how that spout's been sort of folded and it lapped over, probably tin soiled that, certainly soiled that in there. I mean modern ones are plastic, they're shite, there's no comparison, this is this is the real thing, this. I'll take it to the garden, wash it with a bit of trike, and then we'll come back and see what we're going to find. Right, it's all cleaned up quite nicely, it's got some makers names on it as well. Benton and Stormley, Birmingham. I don't know if you can see that when the camera will focus on the bastard or not. I think you're able to tell a few tales this one. Certainly 
a quality job. But I think it's that joint that's been breaking up and it's causing all the problems. I've cleaned it all out as best I can. Here's a modern dish oil pump, a Walesco one, still a nice quality pump. And so we'll prime a little bit of oil into there, we'll put the check valve back in. It's making, that's making sucking noises and that's making blowing noises so hopefully I've got some nice heavy steam oil to put in that's what I'm going to use it for steam oil and heavy bearing oil this is, this is steam oil real thick sticky stuff it is lovely So now hopefully it should perform properly. Let's try and do once we get it sort of primed it should work. Right there you go, it's starting to work. That's it. That's working the way it's supposed to work. God, Johnny, I'm messy. Let's have a look like that for a long time. One thing we do need is a new seal to go in there. Well, this arrived at work a couple of weeks ago from one of my viewers. I don't know who sent it, he didn't see it. It's a box of assorted rubber and plastic seals. I'm often stuck for this sort of thing. Here's a little. I can get the box open, I'll throw them everywhere. Something like that. It's a bit small. And a bigger one. Still too, still too small. It's going to have to be one of these rubber rings, I think. See, I've always, I'm always looking for seals like this, and somebody's kind of sent us a, a box of assorted seals in that I can. Used to be hard to content. It's one of those sort of exploding boxes. Come on, John, sure you can open the box. That's it. Right, what have we got in here? Right, that's absolutely, that's just made for the job. That perfect. Nice new rubber seal in there. So, whoever said that he's in, thank you very much. I do appreciate it, and they will get used. As you can see, all the time. John, you're a messy, <laughs> messy bastard, you are. Bloody hell, man. People wonder why I work on the, the lathe here. It's because my benches are all covered in shite. And also the camera mounts here, so it's ideal. Right, so that goes into there. And that stops any oil from leaking out. So we're really, we're happy with that. Cleaned up oil can. Very happy indeed. You could paint it, but I, honestly I think that would spoil it. It would straighten that as well, but I'd just leave it exactly the way it is, just cleaned. And that'll certainly outlast me. And then when I gets it after me, I would think it'll outlast them. You're not going to wear that bastard out, are you? The way that sewer had run there. Absolutely first class bit of gear. Okay, so we'll open the little little port and then the oil gets dribbled into there like that. Then you lift that up and that allows the oil to drip through. It'll slowly drip through that side glass there. I'll try and get a shot of the oil dripping through once it starts to work. 
It's very slow, you don't need a lot of lubrication, it's just very constant and reliable. This is a close up of the side glass and hope you'll be able to see a drop of oil coming out. I've just opened the, the little valve there, there's a one. And again, so that's too fast, it doesn't need that much oil, so it can slow it down. By reducing how much the needle valve opens, that should slow it right down now. I want to drop every minute or so, that will be more than enough for this. There's one drop. Another one forming, it's still a little bit fast. We well, can see how it works. Dead simple, there's nothing to go wrong with it, and you can clearly see when the oil is dripping. I mentioned last week about this displacement lubricator that oils a steam cylinder. I've actually bought a quarter scale lubricator pump, a steam lubricator pump, a mechanical lubricator pump. It's for a faster model traction engine. I'm sure I'll be able to make it, make it fit on here. It's quite clever the way it works. It's a little little piston plunger pump inside of there. It's got a ratchet mechanism on, which goes like that. It goes down and round it wanks that hand around. And you use something that oscillates or moves on the engine to be able to drive it. I've been toying with the idea of how to mount it. I think I'm going to put a, a bigger stud in there and mount it up there so it'll be like that somewhere and then make a contraption or adapter to drive it off the end of here which is the, the eccentric valve eccentric when the engine moves that goes up and down so we should form some sort of linkage just to pump the oil from here up through a pipe and it goes directly into the steam cylinder it's very nicely made this, really impressed with it, it wasn't a great lot of money when you think how much time and effort's gone into making it. I'll bring the camera in and get a closer look at it, but uh, it is a nice, a nice quality item. Right, this is the little oil pump a bit closer up, that's a handle there that you turn and that operates the pump inside to prime it, the pump oil, and in operation that little pole goes on the end, pushes it round, wanks it round like that and depending on how long the arm is on here depends how much oil it actually puts through how long or short the stroke it is have a look inside it you can see there's a little a little plunger punch there me Stuart Turner enclosed engine's got a one in, very similar, that's the one Bob refurbished but that's how it works anyway it's a lovely bronze casting. It's got foster on because it's meant for a foster traction engine. I'll be going to take that off with a careful use of a flap wheel. I had probably the idea of making a one and I found this at a, a very sensible price and they have got a real good a real good name. A little drain port there, drain the water. Be a one-way valve in there, spring wheel valve. Nice little unit.